In today's video, we're going to explain how to use the lofts feature in uh, SolidWorks. And uh, the loft feature will allow you to create a couple of cool parts that includes changes in dimensions. So one of the main things that we're going to be working on is the design of the body of the airplane, uh, which you see on the screen in front of you. So in order to create this, uh, we're going to need to use the uh, loft feature. So, so far you know a couple of things in SOLIDWORKS. You should know how to do an extrude boss base and extrude cut, which is really a constant cross-section that follows a normal path. Uh, we also know how to use sweeps, which is a constant cross-section, but it follows a variable path. And if you remember when we learned how to do sweeps, we had two uh, profiles. The one, uh, we had two sketches. The first was called the uh, profile, and the second one was called the path. And they are completely separate sketches and you basically need to pass that profile uh, on its path and it generates the part behind it. In today's lecture we're going to be talking about uh, variable cross sections and um, how we can actually do that along also a variable path and that's where the airplane comes in. But before we get to the airplane let's start with a simple exercise. It is highly recommended that you do the loft tutorial in SOLIDWORKS and you can find that if you go under SOLIDWORKS help SOLIDWORKS uh, tutorials and um, you should go to set two and there's an option over here where you can uh, learn how to do the lofts uh, let me just remember where it's at sorry it's under set one and under lofts and it's the hammerhead so uh, you can go ahead and do that and that will give you enough explanation um, uh, in order to design uh, and start to understand the design of lofts. Alright, let's go ahead and start with a simple exercise first. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open a new part. And one of the main things you have to understand is in order to create a loft we have to draw many sketches on separate planes. So the idea of creating new planes should be familiar to all of you as of this point. Okay, we're going to start first by using the front plane and we're going to add a couple more planes to that. So we're going to start from the front plane by clicking on it then we're going to go to reference geometry plane and that will allow us to add an additional plane and we're going to add its thinking and we're going to add uh, another plane that's located two inches away so you can see that the blue plane is the new plane being created and I can add a, a multiple of those depending on exactly what I need uh, for this exercise so for now I just need one so I'm going to go ahead and click check mark and that will be marked as plane one You'll notice that the front plane has disappeared. If you want to see the front plane, all you have to do is just right click on front plane from the design feature tree and then you click on the glasses. And that will allow you to see the front plane too. So from now, go ahead and click on plane one and we're going to go also to the reference geometry plane and we're going to add a couple more planes. So we're going to add one more at three inches, so a bit further away. And we're going to add one more from plane two that's located at two inches. So there we go, we have now four planes, the front plane, plane one, plane two, and plane three, and we're going to use those in order to draw um, our sketches, and then we can loft them together. Okay, you're going to notice that uh, it's very important to select the plane first before you start drawing your sketch. Now, although if I click on the front plane, click space bar, normal two, and although it might look like I'm drawing on, the fr on uh, plane number three, you're really drawing on the front plane because that's the one that you have selected from the design feature tree. So for the first one, let's go ahead and I'm just going to put a point and I'm going to add the point at the origin. So that's the only sketch I'm going to add on the front plane. Then click check mark and then followed by the purple arrow and you should see that the point has been created on the front plane. Considering we want everything to be along the same axis, it is a good idea to use um, things are centered based on this origin. So for example, let's go to plane 2 and for plane 2 I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. Again, I'm not really worried about dimensions for now. We're going to add dimensions later on uh, and you should know how to add dimensions at this point. But you'll notice that the origin of the circle is really lined up with the origin of the previous sketch and then I can click on the purple arrow. Now if we go to plane 2, again normal 2, and let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. Instead of drawing a regular rectangle, it's a good idea to use center rectangle. So everything, again, is from the origin. So you can see that I'm going to get something like this. And again, purple arrow. So you see that I have them on three separate planes. Make sure that you're clicking on the plane first, then drawing a sketch. So click on the plane, 
spacebar, normal to then um, draw the sketch. So I'm just going to draw another rectangle, but I'm going to make this one a bit longer that way. And there we go. So now we have four sketches on four separate planes. So you see that the process to create this was very straightforward and very simple. And to create the loft is even simpler. All you really have to do is you need to select the sketches in the order that you want the loft. So sketch one, hold down the control key, click on sketch two, click on sketch three, and click on sketch four. So you notice that I selected them in order. Then I'm going to go to features, and then loft boss space. And when I do that, it should give me some sort of shape, and I should see those green dots. Those green dots are my contour lines, okay? So I want to make sure that I can actually control them. And you'll see that as I move these green dots into different locations, I can add different twists and different uh, directions, uh, different uh, 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 basically paths uh, on my part. You'll see that in some situation, if I move them too much, the twist becomes way too much, and it kind of breaks the loft. So you want to make sure that everything is lined up nicely and you're going to see that whenever they, they are lined up and a loft can be formed without crazy interferences, then it could be done. What, you, what I recommend usually doing is just going to the top plane and then you can grab all these green dots and you can just move them to the side making sure that everything is, is lined up and some of them might pop out so just make sure that you can kind of go back and put them at whatever corner that you really want. Okay. So that is it for lofts, um, and this is a very simple exercise. We're going to start working on the airplane in a second, but uh, regarding a very simple exercise regarding lofts, you, you now get an idea of how to do it, and you will be using this technique to do the screwdriver. All right, I will catch you in a second for the airplanes. So how do you create that airplane in SOLIDWORKS? So how do we go from uh, you know knowing how to do some basic lofts to create something complex like this? In order to do this, we have to use some sort of a guide, and that guide is a picture of an airplane that is of your selection. So you can do any airplane that you want, um, and basically just find a picture of it, and uh, you're good to go. On Blackboard, I did upload a picture that you can use for a Boeing 747. Feel free to find uh, anything else. So you can just simply go to Google and search, um, you know, Boeing 747 orthographic views or uh, whatever the airplane that you want to use. So here's an example of an image that I found. You want to make sure that all your profiles, so the top, front, and right, are all in the same image. You don't want different images uh, because then you have the problem of different scales. So make sure that all of them are in the same image. Great, so now we have the image. We are ready to move on to actually start creating it. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new part. and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start from the top plane. So I have this image. I know I have the top view, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the top plane. So from that, I'm going to go to um, Tools, Sketch Tools, okay, and then Sketch Picture. Now you'll notice that Sketch Picture will be grayed out. A lot of students have this problem because they try to go through this process and just click on Sketch Pictures. Now the question is, where do you want to put this picture? Okay. So you want to make sure that you select the plane and a step that we usually don't do before when we create a sketch is we actually have to click on sketch. So the purple arrow and the X should be apparent over here. Okay. So make sure that you see that. So I'm going to repeat this step again to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So we're going to select the plane, space bar normal to, then we're going to go to sketch and we're going to make sure we're in the sketch mode then we're going to go to SOLIDWORKS tools sketch tools sketch picture and we can go ahead and select the picture that we need which is this one open and there we go you do not want to click on any one of those blue squares and resize them if you want to resize them or you want to do any modifications please make sure that you use the properties window over here and you don't do it by hand so what I need to do is I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna move it in such a way that I'm gonna try as much as possible to place the nose on the origin so again this is an estimate way of creating the body of an airplane so it's not gonna be perfect but it's at least the best thing that we can do for this stage of this class so we're gonna go ahead and click check mark and then we click on the purple arrow 
So notice that I clicked on the purple arrow to exit out of the sketch. So now I have the sketch here. This is just a picture. I need to open up another sketch to create the outline. So again, I'm going to click on the top plane, and then I'm going to go to sketch, and then I'm going to click on the spline tool. Okay, and now using the spline tool, this is going to just be tedious, so it's not difficult, it's just tedious. I'm just going to start from the origin, and I'm basically going to outline the body of the airplane. Okay, so try not to put too many points, but try to put enough that it actually looks good. Okay, so you'll see that based on this, I'm gonna just going to keep repeating it until I get all the way to the end. And again, I'm trying as, as close as possible, right? So you're not going to get anything, you know, super accurate. But if you just want to create the body of an airplane and practice the loft feature for that, this is a good exercise for that. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of come here and I'm going to stop right there, hit escape. Okay, so instead of doing it again, what I need to do is I'm going to click on line, add a construction line and make it infinite. And make sure that my points here are lined up. So I'm going to click on that point, click on the line and make sure they're coincident. Okay, and that will allow me now to simply just click on this line hold down the control key, click on the construction line and go to mirror entities and this will give me both sections instead of spending time to do the other side okay so you'll see that I basically have the outline of the top of the airplane completed I'm going to click on uh, purple arrow and that will complete my sketch okay now this will be the first profile now this was created on the top plane now I need to go to the front plane okay so notice I'm going to the front plane because my image here is a bit uh, a bit weird right although this is supposed to be the right view it's actually on my front plane so uh, just bear with me on this one but your picture might be different so uh, feel free to do whatever you want so then we're gonna do front plane repeat the same process sketch until we see the purple arrow hover over SOLIDWORKS tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. We're going to select the exact same picture. We're going to drag it over until the nose is lined up. Okay, and we're going to repeat the exact same process by outlining this. So we're going to click on check mark first. Purple arrows, so remember there are two different sketches. So now you can kind of see just from those two pictures how the airplane is formed like that you can get kind of some of a 3D feel and then we're going to click on front again normal to and then we're going to go to spline tool and I'm going to outline the body of that airplane so you can go through this and just to save time I'm going to stop and once you complete it you're going to end up with two sketches and that will basically look something like this okay so you'll see over here that I don't really see my images I only see the profiles if you want to hide your images it's very simple and I kind of showed you that this before all that you have to do is considering that they're on two separate sketches so this one is the picture and this one is the picture all I have to do is just click it on it and then you click on the glasses and then click on it and then click on the glasses and there we go so we're left with just the profile okay so technically we have this as of this point okay so make sure that notice that the tail does not match up right but the nose is, is starting from the same point now your goal is we're gonna go ahead and starting from the right plane over here we're gonna add a lot of planes and you notice that the area that there's a lot of changes in the cross section we want a high density of planes and then over here is kinda static so there's not a lot of changes in the body so we can just do less concentration and then we want more concentration in the back so if we go ahead and create those planes here are the planes that I created and you can see the density that I selected for my body you don't want to go overboard so anywhere between like 17 and 25 is a, is a good number uh, but you don't want to go over that okay so how do we go from having those planes over here to actually 
drawing the profiles because they're not really an ellipse and uh, it's not really a circle so how do we do that it's actually very simple and you have to make sure that you follow it otherwise this will take you a really long time so let's say I'm on plane 6 for example all I really have to do is just click on the plane spacebar normal to so now I can see it from this view I'm gonna go to the spline tool and I'm just gonna click on each one of those points okay until I have this contour so you might be saying oh this is blue you know and it's actually not even on it right so how do we even fix that so here's where the trick is so they're not really coincident they're pierced so you'll notice that if I come from this angle right I'm gonna click on this arc hold down the control key click on this point okay and I'm gonna click pierce and we're gonna do this all the way around so point hold down the control key arc pierce point hold down the control key arc pierce and then point control key arc pierce so you see that your sketch turns black even without any dimensions okay you see that so now we're gonna repeat that a couple more times for each one of those planes that we created so we have 17 planes so we're gonna repeat that so again it's just tedious but it's not that difficult and then when we do that and we create the loft let me show you the sketches that you end up with there we go so we created all these sketches okay and then you simply just do a loft one loft will do all of them and you get this body of the airplane so if I just want to hide those sketches so we don't see them so we just see the body of the airplane you would basically have something like this so this is a pretty good step and now we need to move on to the wings so it's again the exact same process I'm gonna add I'm gonna add a couple of uh, the profile the same thing we did with the right and top okay and then I'm gonna add a couple of planes okay so I only added two planes for the wings and then I went ahead and I drew this cross section and I had my first wing okay and you can see the way I did that is this was my cross section this was my other cross section and this was my other cross section and those are very approximated so you're not gonna be able to get exact numbers but get them as close as you can and then you go ahead and you mirror it to the other side okay and you get the other wing and then you do the rudder and the tail and there you go it's that simple to create the body of an airplane so pick a picture and then start outlining it and then you're good to go